Let's podcast alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovias inside Eford Studios, downtown Raleigh. Thanks to Empire Properties and th thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. We live in a world where everything's in the cloud now. Even as I've I've noticed it this, this week when I've had to pick up my kids multiple times from their respective schools for a variety of ailments. Now they're like, there's a little iPad. They have your scan your ID. They take a picture of you. Boom, goes to the cloud. They, they verify you. And then they come get your kid. Why are you still doing stuff the old-fashioned way with paper? Let's move to the cloud. He says to the yellow pad guy. Well, but you notice that we've moved the yellow pad to the cloud too, mm. you know, with the graphics and everything else. Copiers-plus.com. That's where it's Literally at. just had my friend Scott Peacock say to me today, I didn't know anything about Copiers Plus before your program. See? See? Advertising. It works. Costanza. Yeah, we're not going to go full Elon Musk and tell you to go F yourself if you don't want to advertise on the show. Oh, you missed that yesterday? Are you being for real? I am absolutely being for real. Yes. What was he trying to uh, so, solicit ads for? Real, though? real. Okay, real quick, because it's been all over my damn threads. It's funny. Threads is where you go to talk about Elon. It's hilarious. That's that's its major hook right now. Um, so Elon Musk was doing a sit down with the New York Times, their deal book seminar, you know, to kind of talking about the state of the industry and advertising, whatever. Bob Iger the CEO of Disney's literally in the audience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were asking him questions about his very, very bad tweets and how advertisers have paused or left Twitter altogether. And he's like, that's blackmail. You, you, you know, Twitter goes out of business. It's your fault. It's not my fault. And then he says, if you don't want to advertise, go F yourself. And then I think at one point he says, hi, Bob. So salute to you, man. You want to kill your business. That's how you do. So that's one thing. If you don't, if you don't want to advertise on the podcast, we're going to be like, Hey man, we get it. Maybe we can revisit this conversation next year. And then we move on with ourselves. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's literally happened in the last 24 hours. Cause I'm, but wait, what do you buy on? You buy Twitter. targeted ads on Twitter. Oh, 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 oh yeah. I mean, not that Twitter's a really robust ad marketplace right it's not really moving the needle in that regard but whatever that's either here nor there so now, naive when it comes to these things the thing <clears throat> that you know the funny thing about twitter i'll, I'll i'm actually going to use twitter as a way to pivot into basketball do, do the radio thing joe right give us give us that transition it reminds out me a of lot your... of no that's my colin cowherd so here's where i'm going to transition you know i've tried to wean myself off of social media in general while also understanding that social media is important to what we do correct okay because i do feel that somehow there is like brain rot that sets in if you spend too much time online even though being online is what keeps us in business so you have to be judicious of who you spend your time with so thankfully a lot of y'all have decided to spend your time with us. So we appreciate that. I hope that when you listen to us, you don't suffer from brain rot. I hope. We owe, we owe Spotify some money, by the way. Uh, we'll get to that in house. <laughs> Feels so, good. So, the, the, but the thing, the hook of Twitter, though, that Threads has not quite been able to replicate is real time sports reaction. So when I settle in to watch some hoops the last two nights, Threads is not really popping, but all the people that I follow that cover Carolina, the people that I follow that cover NC State, the people that I follow who cover Duke, they're not quite active on threads. They're still active on Twitter. So while I'm watching the game and I want to get a little color like you would on, on Twitter, man, you still got to go to Twitter. So that gets us to hoops last night with North Carolina and Duke. Let's start with Tar Heels, who were damn impressive, drop, dropping 100 points on one of the better defensive teams in all of college basketball. Not a very Rick Barnes-like display defensively from Tennessee last night. Certainly not in the first half. No, certainly not. points by the Tar Heels in the first half of that basketball game. Certainly not. Look, UNC, you, I think UNC has been building to this, and it's good to see it happen at home with a good crowd against a good team that was a great test. And I think there are two main takeaways that have nothing to do with Armando Baycott, who was pretty good last night, and nothing to do with R.J. Davis, who was also pretty good last night. The two biggest factors to why North Carolina has people going, oh, I see the, the Tar Heels might be back, is that Elliot Cadeau has grown into the starter's role that we saw the last two nights. 
and he probably had his best game last night. I think that was what? 10 assists, no turnovers. In the first three games of the season where he played roughly 20 minutes a night until the Arkansas loss, he went from eight assists and eight turnovers in the first three games to 21 assists and just one turnover in the last sure. four. And he played major minutes last night. I alluded to this yesterday in talking about how Hubert Davis has gone away from what we saw last year. We seemed very locked in on who he was going to play and didn't really develop his bench to playing a bunch of guys and trusting Elliot Cadeau to get his feet wet so that he could be as big of a contributor as he was last night. So this is excellent from an Elliot Cadeau standpoint who reclassified. This is excellent for North Carolina going forward. And I love that it's Marcus Page mentoring him. Yes. That's because remember Marcus Page, we remember Marcus Page at the end. Right. And he was really, really good. I mean, he was he was as as uh, Roy liked to say a tough little tough nut, little nut, you know. Like, but he was a baller. But at the beginning, it was hard for him to find his feet, like he because he's not an uber talented guy. I get the sense with Elliot Cadeau, there's a lot of Marcus Page in there, you know. And a lot of, a lot of people have tried to compare him to Kendall Marshall, but he's not that size. He's not no. that frame. He, no. You look at him on the floor, frame wise, and you're like, oh yeah, they've had. That's the that's always going to be the beauty of Carolina basketball to me. You could always plug a player in and be like, oh yeah, we've had one of those, right. and then that makes you have the warm and fuzzy feelings for that type of player. Mm -hmm. And last night, it's funny you said he had his best game yet. He didn't make a shot. Not the point. But that's not what he's that's there not for. The point. Right? He's there to make everybody else go. Now, well, and, look, as much as Caleb Love is. Because a lot of this season is going to be about like, oh, you know, what did Caleb Love do, not do, and whatnot. Biggest issue with Caleb Love is, you know, you live by Caleb Love, you die by Caleb Love. It was the roller coaster, the, yeah. the Love roller coaster. Shout out to, yeah. I always, I always preferred the remake by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But anyway, the point is that sometimes <laughs> if it went to Caleb Love, it might not be coming back out, and that's not good for RJ. That's not good for Armando Baycott. So yes, not scoring yeah. points, but that's not why he's there. That's not what they need. Which gets to my second point. Pete Nance, man, bless him. He was supposed to come in, plug and play. You go be Brady Manic. Right. You, you go do that. You never want to be the guy who follows the guy. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Like, you, you mean you want me to go on an all time heater in the last? No, no, I can't do that. And Pete Nance had some back issues and whatnot. It, it just wasn't a good, wasn't I a good fit for Pete Nance? He was also a defensive liability for the Tar Heels last year. Here comes Harrison Ingram who can slide into the four, slide into the three, and has been making shots. Uh, he's had 12 threes in the last four games. Uh, and again, um, he has a particular energy and spark that makes him a lot of fun to watch. And he was incredibly fun to watch last night. He was part of that early heat check, too, for the Tar Heels as they were breaking out a very big lead. But here's where we get to the other part of North Carolina. That would be... Mm. And you can't let you can't let Tennessee score 92 points on you, man. And it did get into single digits in the second half. Not that I ever felt that North Carolina was going to lose this game, but it did at least raise, as Hubert Davis would like to say, a yellow flag about the Tar Heels defensively, where I don't know if their best lineup, which we saw on the court a bunch last night, is good enough defensively yet. Those are things you can work on. It was like that was some Jackson Pollock shit right there. You just threw every single piece of paint from that game on the wall. I did. Because <laughs> that did you have my espresso? Because to me, did you have my espresso bean? No, it, it's called I'm jacked up on adrenaline <laughs> from having to go pick up my kid okay. again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying try to unpack a few of those things. Okay, unpack them then. Uh, Ingram, when the season began, uh, Brad Frederick over there, you know, mm -hmm. I texted with him, say, hey, man, what, what are we thinking with this new group? Who, who are you looking? Because a lot of people were talking about Cadeau. Yeah. And he, and he was like, yeah, no, he's he's legit. He's a pass first guy. Like, he's going to run the offense. He goes, but Harrison Ingram, that's the guy that's going to really kind of make us go a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and, we, and quite frankly, we haven't had. So and, and different from Brady Manick, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe a little bit. You're not allowed to say bad things about Theo Pinson, but maybe like a little bit more polished version yeah, maybe because because of what they wanted um the kid from last year they they wanted him to be theo pinson so badly mm -hmm. for all for you know leaky they wanted leaky black so badly to be theo pinson it just wasn't what his skill set sure, was sure, a sure. different player i think ingram is closer to that pinson scale uh maybe not in personality of course but i think he's a really important player the most how you can tell they already trust him 38 minutes in that game last yeah. night um that's number 
two. I think Cadeau is you're right. I think Ingram number two. Number three, I wouldn't worry about the defense in the second half of that game because of the way that they had dominated in the first half and the way that everything came together. The most important thing for me from that game was there is a different standard of for basketball, for men's basketball at North Carolina. And that standard goes... And I haven't seen Carolina play to that standard since the Final Four mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. There was never a point last year where the money was on the table and they showed up. And I know, I know it's November 29th yesterday. The money was on the table yesterday. They showed up and yeah. they they said to Tennessee, "We are better than you. You, you think you're a bully. You think we're gonna you're gonna come in here and drag this game down into the 60s and, and yeah. maybe push us around like you did Duke last year, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe like Pitt likes to do when they come over here and think that we're soft." Carolina announced with authority last night in the first 20 minutes of that basketball game, "We're not. This ain't last year." We're not soft. You're not going to push mm -hmm. us around. And quite frankly, scoring 60 points and a half. If you're, if you're Roy and if you are of the Roy disciples, <laughs> you're watching them. Get, I'm serious. You're watching them get up and down the floor. And I you're like, you, that. you go, that's Carolina basketball. Not the crap that you saw last year. That is Carolina basketball. I think you nailed it right there. You're not going to win a championship in November. No, it's just, again, I have to stay. I, I try to stay really, really consistent in what we see in college basketball in the modern era in November. However, you are absolutely on point by pointing out that this game was a statement game for UNC to indicate to everybody, including themselves, this ain't last year. And it's why I asked Armando Baycott at ACC tip off back in October, you know, last year you said that it was about last year. So how do you prevent this year from being about last year and the year before that again? And that is by wiping the slate clean and announcing that, no, 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 this is who we are this year. And there were a lot of fun and to watch. Symbolic, by the way, because you remember in Hubert's first year, they got pasted by Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Pasted oh, yeah. early yep. by Tennessee. And it, so, again, symbolic. You come home, it's your home building, you're announcing in this newfangled mm -hmm. ACC, SEC relationship, oh, okay, oh, you, you pushed Duke around last year? That that ain't us. Now, what's funny, speaking of Duke, is that they're continuing to be pushed around, which is a little eyebrow raising to watch the Blue Devils. You referenced this yesterday in that Duke, we act as though Duke is this new group. It's not. The, the key, the core group is a veteran group by today's standards, right down to Jeremy Roach. Okay. So your key four guys all on the court played majority minutes last year, and yet Duke against Arkansas last night. Credit to Arkansas for playing a really good defensive game from what I watched last night. The bigger issue is that Duke's not playing defense. They they looked, um, to borrow a phrase from Bomani Jones years ago, they looked alarmingly unathletic last night against Arkansas. That's not what I expect out of the Blue Devils. That's not what I saw at the end of last year, even when they got knocked out from Tennessee. Tennessee... As much as people focused on Tennessee knocking them out physically last year, the reason why Duke got knocked out is because Tennessee couldn't miss last year in the NCAA tournament. Last night was more of the part of Duke that people were questioning before they turned things around post Virginia road game, where they questioned people questioned their toughness and Kyle Filipowski and you know how how tough is this guy? Do they back down? All those kinds of things. They answered that bell by kind of marking off the list of teams that beat them when they went to the ACC championship and won it. You're not, that's not a team that's supposed to regress. Now, I don't know if these guys are dealing with some issues that we're not aware of. You know, Filipowski coming off of surgery, things like that. What's up with Mark Mitchell? I know he's had some issues as well. At one point, Jeremy Roach got his ankle tweaked late in the game. But Duke doesn't look right. And it, uh, as much as people want to focus on Arkansas forcing Duke into some tough shots, I think the bigger problem, and John Shire talked about it yesterday, defensively, they just didn't have it defensively. Let's last night. start with Arkansas. Yeah, when I saw that they had lost to UNCG, I knew they were going to play their Super Bowl in this game. They are also missing their best player, by the way. And I knew everyone would be like, oh man, well, Arkansas sucks. They lost to UNCG and they mm. lost to Carolina. Like, how good are they? Well, when you come home and you are desperate, which Arkansas was last night, you're going to get Arkansas's fastball. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which Duke got last night. I have, but I remain to have, I have the same questions I had about Duke before this season, mm -hmm. right? Last year. As I correctly pointed out, because you know I love it when I'm right. I know you God, do. man, you're 100% right, John. <laughs> um, I said the best thing that happened to John Shire was the way that, that, that Mike's career ended mm -hmm. because nobody had a single expectation. And John did great work last year, A, to not try to be Mike, 
and B, put a team that wasn't ultra talented in position to win the ACC championship, which they did. Great work. Okay. Now you come back off of that. You bring guys back. And the expectation now is, well, they're going to, they're going to go to the final four. They're going to win the national championship. When the truth of the matter is, when you look at Duke's roster, and I know people say, well, Filipowski, he's a first round pick. Yeah, but he's a, he's not a lottery pick. Mm-hmm. You look at Tyrese Proctor, people are like, well, he could be a lottery pick. Could. Mm, I don't know about that. Mm, know about <laughs> and that. he might be a first round pick, but you're not talking about, you're not in the class of Brandon Ingram. You're mm-hmm. not in the class of Zion Williamson. You're not even in the class of my whipping boy, RJ Barrett. Okay. You are not, they don't have uber ultra talented players. So now you have to figure things out around them, which gets you to the second part. You bought in a freshman class that was ranked very highly, but how good are those players? Not all five-star recruits are created equal. They're trying with Jared McCain. He's starting. He has been struggling. Uh, Foster is a guy who had the one good game against Michigan State. Obviously, he's inconsistent, but you're looking at the uh, power, looking at the minutes that that he's playing. Every year, every team, as Mike used to say, has to run their own race. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing that Mike Krzyzewski ever would say, everybody has to run their own race. This team has to run their own race. Filipowski is clearly the bus driver. But Proctor, as you mentioned, post-Virginia last year, was the one who got them really going because he, he was had that, elevated his and game. Philipowski and he too. has Philipowski he too. has struggled like a mo yeah. this year and again last night with a poor performance. So who's Jackson Pollock now? I was good though. I, I, I mean, you, I, my, my you, Duke takes her. My you, Duke takes her. Are solid. You're, you're, I was gonna say. I think my juices flow all the time. I, I was gonna say you giving me crap for just throwing things at the wall. I mean, you're going back to Mike Shashevsky takes and this and that. I mean, we're just your juices are flowing now. What are you talking about, Duke? I Duke, see you. I got Duke takes. I see you. I got Carolina I see, takes too. You were just you're bouncing. Yeah, like like I, like I said, whoa. I'm I'm running on adrenaline this morning. Housekeeping. So I'll give you a bean. <laughs> no, I, that's the thing. I don't need one of those. <laughs> Delightful. You know how it is, though. You get like on parenting adrenaline. You yeah, know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, if your kid's sick and you get a call and your kid's like, I don't feel good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, and then like, you know, you have to call, call your wife, call your partner. Like, okay, who's doing what? Well, I got to call at nine. Well, I got to record. Okay, well, I'll do it. And run around. Those types. And then I'll there's, do it live. we'll do it live. Then, you know, Glenwood's down a one lane at the light. And I'm like, then of course try try find parking on don't, Fayetteville Street at nine o'clock in, in the morning. Don't pass anybody. Yeah, yeah. Illegally. Trust me. That's do you want to do the Whitaker and Hamer ad right here? Just do it. <laughs> Pop it. <laughs> WH dot lawyer. I'm like a spokesman. <laughs> if I found myself in a situation where I had a traffic violation trying to get back to the studio in time, <laughs> Whitaker and Hamer. They got me. Check them out. WH dot lawyer. Again, that's WH. Dot lawyer. All right, let's get to some housekeeping. BreakingT.com slash OG. Brand new t-shirt. It's got the North. I don't have it on the screen. I know. Whatever. It's the NC flag. We got the blue. We got the red. We got the Carolina blue. The OG. The five stars. Go get your hoodie. Go get your t-shirts. Go get your V-necks. The youth tees. I believe the children are our future, Joe. So go to BreakingT.com slash OG. Uh, you mentioned Spotify. Yeah. Big shouts to everybody who put us on social media with their Spotify wrapped. As an Apple Music, Apple Podcast user, I don't live that Spotify wrapped life. It's cool. It's fine. I'm not jealous that you get these cool widgets and analytics based on what you listen to all year, but I appreciate you putting it out there because I'm a nosy person. I want to know what people are listening to. Real ones post their vinyl, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, on Instagram, I basically play. I, I p- post a picture of the record that I happen to be playing that day. I try to have no repeats. Oh, do I follow you on Instagram? Probably not. I follow the OG account, OG Triangle Media. Yes, okay. you do that. So I got into the Spotify account for podcasters because they'll give us. Oh, now that we're in the top five percent. No, 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 that's not it. It's more about um, as a, as if you use. Well, hold on a second. I'll get to some of that stuff. So I got into the spot. No, it's not that. We're super successful, but it's not that. Well, <sighs> buddy, we just started, man. Come on. I understand that. Understand. We have, there is no PR department. I get there that. There is no promotional I am the, department. I am the PR department. <laughs> okay. <and> that's scary. <laughs> what I was trying to say was, it's not about, you're getting the top 5% thing wrong. Okay. 
What you mean by the I top, saw it. it was exciting. What the top five percent means is that for over a thousand listeners who use Spotify, yeah. we are in their top five percent. Cool, which is awesome. So I started doing a little bit more research through Chartable. Chartable is a good way to keep track of you know how your podcast seems to be doing in terms of actual plays, not just downloads, but actual plays. What's the difference? Uh, a down. I mean, I could technically have downloaded a podcast onto my phone and never played it. Okay, it counts when you actually hit play. And you listen to more than 60 seconds. Really? That's the thing that matters ultimately. Okay. A download can mean anything. Okay. You know, I I follow, I have like 20 different podcasts. Doesn't mean I'm listening to all 20 podcasts, but they happen to be on my phone. They've, they've been called to be on my phone. Regardless. Right now in the US in sports, we're hovering in the two, uh, you know, like if we're doing Ken Palm for podcasts. Yeah. We're just outside the 200. Like we we hover between 200 and 250 in terms of sports podcasts. Out of in the US. how many are there? Oh, I mean millions, dude. Okay, millions. If you looked at it, it's funny. I looked at. It, I'm like, okay, you know, being anywhere between 200 to 250 in terms of podcasts, top podcasts in the country for sports. What are we like in all podcasts? <laughs> what do you think we are in all podcasts? No idea. According to Chartable, uh, we are 1750, 1750. Out of, out of millions. Out of millions. That's Still pretty, pretty good. good. That's pretty good. So that was kind of interesting uh, looking at all the Spotify stuff and appreciate everybody who has posted their Spotify wrapped and we're included in that. Feels like our rivals 247 composite ranking. 1750? It's, it's kind of like that, right? I like it. It's kind of like that. One other it's note about... three star. One other note about the Spotify wrapped stuff. Yesterday, we had shout out a guy who had listened to us for like 6,000 minutes. We were and in the top one percent. Matthew came over the top, didn't he? No, <laughs> Russell out of Wilmington oh. came in in the top 05 percent. Dude had sixty nine hundred minutes. Nice. So I sent him a hoodie. Oh, sweet. So shout out to you. And one other note: uh, it took me getting fired to finally show up on the <laughs> National Sports Media Association. <laughs> North Carolina Sportscaster of the Year finalist list. I finally met all. Had I known that it just took me getting fired for people had to go. I known. Oh yeah, I remember that obvious guy. I'm kidding. This is great. Although you yeah. were the first Joe to be nominated as a finalist no, for the NSMA yesterday. But there's a last reason. year. Obvious is first. I like it. And no, it's only because of his seniority in terms of radio. So I'm looking at this list and shout out to Gold, who's won this before. Anish Roth does an amazing job mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with the Panthers Radio Network. And look, these are all of our colleagues. Yeah, I, I see this list and I see all of our colleagues. Mike Salarte. Salarte in the house. The Mike's here. You know, right? You got Maniscalco, Josh Graham, Jones Angel, all these guys, right? Uh, you see Joe Parson, Luke DeCock, Scout Fowler, Steve Wiseman. But you, are you noticing a trend? Um, a lot of men? Yeah. Okay. Can we do better? We could try. What happened to the women in the in sports media? Where'd they all go? I feel like they get smart and get out. It's my probably fr my friend is. Laura Keeley, my friend Rachel Carter. It's probably what it is. <laughs> Both became lawyers. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm looking at this list. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, man. It's great that we're all nominated. I didn't realize myself, wait a minute. They, this is a sausage party. They were young and they, they were like, I'm going to become a lawyer. And I was like, good call. Yes, save yourself. So it, does that make us the idiots? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that makes us the idiots. Anyway, I just saw um, this and I was just like, man, we really do lack representation in the state of North Carolina when it comes to sports media. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But to your point, Joe, we do not in the sports media industry foster no. a reason for no. young, smart <laughs> women in the business to stick around. Young, smart anybody to stick around. But yeah, so it's, it's unfortunate. It's just, yeah. the, it's just the nature of the business right now. It's too bad that's the case because we have lost some really awesome oh. sports writers, sports personalities in this area. Thankfully, we keep Brownlow, who's going to join us in a little bit. Yeah. Every time we talk about college football, every time we talk about college basketball, it's all about Wings Over. Check them out in downtown Raleigh, in Chapel Hill, in Greenville. Wings Over has a great website. And when I say it's efficient, you order what you want. You say you're going to pick it up at seven o'clock. It's going to be ready at seven o'clock. And of course, with the Raleigh location, that parking is available. It's right behind the building. Easy in, easy out. Can't ask for a better situation, man. Wings over. <laughs> Hot lemon pepper, man. 
that's the move. And big thanks to Mosquito Authority for sponsoring Ovius and Gilio. Check them out, bugsbite.com. You might not be thinking about mosquitoes right now because it's cold. However, you might want to think about installing something like a misting system on your patio or your deck to really keep the mosquitoes away along with the treatments that they do throughout the spring and summer months. And of course, as it's cold, critters might be trying to come into the house. That's where Pest Authority comes Those into play. Those termites. Why? Why? Why do they vex me? I thought it was, I thought like you had to have a termite contract thing. Yeah. Treatment. I didn't, I thought it was like a legal requirement. Mm -mm. No. And when Hayes is like, no, 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 people like to gamble on that. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, no, it's a gamble. Whoa. No, you're right about Don't that. Gamble. Don't gamble on that. Don't gamble Do on not termites. Gamble on that. Absolutely. Please not. <laughs> go to bugsbite.com. Are you having a Capri Sun right now? Yeah, it's delicious. What flavor Capri Sun is that? Fruit punch. I'm just impressed you got it through the top. Oh, yeah. I gave up years ago and I just punctured the Capri Sun pouch through the bottom. Ooh. I'm a backdoor man when it comes to Capri Sun, Joe. Let's go to Dick in a car. <laughs> no, 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 no. Grab Dick oh. in a car. Grab Dick in a car. <laughs> if we sound loopy is because I was looking at the agenda for today's show and I did write down the Carolina Panthers and I went, do we really, do we really need to talk about the Carolina Panthers? A little dead cat bounce. I mean, there's that playing it, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> it, would, it, it would be amusing. It would be amusing if the Carolina Panthers um, com look completely different offensively with Bryce Young now that Frank Reich is out of there and there's not this push and pull of how Frank wants to run the offense, even when Thomas Brown was given play calling duties. Now Thomas Brown gets to call the game without Frank Reich covering over him and those types of things. But the reason why I wanted to talk about the Panthers here is because my favorite thing to come out of this week is the coaching speculation. Who's going to take over for the Panthers? Okay. And there's your list of hot young assistants, offensive coordinators, young offensive minds, the next Mike McDaniel, the next Sean McVay, the next Kyle Shanahan, Ben Johnson for Detroit. That's like the one everybody really points to. Yeah. He was in the running last year. It didn't work out, obviously. Depending on who you ask, there were reasons for that. But my favorite, my favorite isn't your suggestion of Jim Harbaugh, which, by the way, I do agree with your overall point about bringing Harbaugh to the Carolina Panthers. No, my favorite one is, what about Bill Belichick when he eventually gets fired by the New England Patriots? Because we're going to have a really weird succession of things. Vrabel's probably done in Tennessee, but Vrabel is the coming home chosen son that's going to go replace Bill Belichick in New England. So the question is, does Bill Belichick just quit entirely and go coach lacrosse somewhere to D3 school? Or no. does he do what you say he's going to yeah, do? Yeah, he wants the he wants Don Shula's record. Okay. Which he's going to need like three years to get, by the way. It's going to be a while. So this gets to my central question on Bill Belichick. What has Bill Belichick done in the last four years in New England that would lead you to believe it would be successful with the Carolina Panthers? Let's strip away. Let's strip away the David Tepper aspect of this, because I know the immediate response is there's no way Bill Belichick's personality is going to get along with the meddling personality that is David Tepper. And that's funny to me as if Robert Kraft doesn't have opinions on things and the palace intrigue of Bill Belichick wanting to move on from Tom Brady and Robert Kraft being like, you can't make me pick my favorite child. What are you talking about? So, but let's focus on Bill Belichick post Tom Brady. And I'll ask this question that we've asked on the, on the podcast before would Bill Belichick fire Bill Belichick? He would have. Yeah. Two years ago. Okay. Yep. And he's been given multiple opportunities to get it right, to flex his genius as an NFL evaluator. And instead, he keeps going, I'm going to turn this jabroni tin can into a football player. Why do you want to bring that to the Panthers? Again, what of Bill Belichick have you seen as an evaluator, as a roster builder in the last four years that would lead you to believe, yes, this is the answer for the Carolina Panthers? Yeah, I, th I think the only reason you would in theory, do it is because in theory, the reason that Bill Belichick would take the job is because Tepper would say, I'm completely stepping away from all of this because I implicitly right. trust Bill Belichick. 
But why would you trust Bill Belichick right now? That's my point. What yeah. has he done to recently, give you reason to not, believe? Not a lot recently. No. Okay, then. Unless yeah. the whole play from Bill Belichick is to see how bad can I manage a squad and bring my buddies back and position my kid to, I want to see how far I can go before Robert yeah. Kraft decides to fire me. Bill Belichick historian, I do believe is going to go to Washington. That's where Vince Lombardi finished his career. I'm with you on that one. Also, if you tell me that Tom Brady is going to travel through the multiverse and we're going to get a late twenties, early thirties version of Tom Brady to join Bill Belichick in Charlotte. Yeah. All I right, mean, I'm with you. I'm can, with you. on that. I, I know what you're, doing and I don't make me be a Bill Belichick apologist. Mm -hmm. um, he is the best coach in NFL history. Now he had I'm not Tom Brady that. with him and that was a big part of it. But but I'm going to use one of your yeah. lines. You can't write your own ending. No, you can't. And, you absolutely and cannot. What happens and it's a different often, challenge. It's a completely different yes. challenge. And what yeah. happens oftentimes in sports is that coaches don't want to walk away from the game because they don't oh, know no. what else they're going to do. No, he no, no. clearly doesn't want to walk and away. And that's blinding what he's doing right now. Yeah. And he's singularly focused on both the record and his kit. Yeah. Because that's what these coaches are about. Speaking of being blinded, the other big NFL news item is once again, yeah, boy, my guy, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to close the book here because <laughs> I don't need the book. <laughs> I can just vamp on Aaron Bam. Rodgers. I get the hat. <laughs> yes. Here we go. So yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, come to find out that Aaron Rodgers is being placed in the 21-day window for the Jets. Essentially, he gets to come back, participate in football activities, and then they'll make a decision in that time whether to place him on IR, which affects, effectively ends his season, or put him on the active roster, and he'll be back on the football field at some point. A couple things about this. There's layers to what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. The first one is Aaron Rodgers and the storyline in New York around his Achilles is what happens when the NFL product this year has been, as the kids would say, mid. Like, let's think about this. What have been the compelling storylines this year in the NFL? Taylor Swift. Right. That happens when the product on the field is not where it's been the last couple of years. You're, you, you live in a world where we're trying to make Joshua Dobbs a thing. No, I mean, no, no. I mean, fine, but he's not a thing. He's not coming out of nowhere. That's not what it is. We're not in a world where we live in a world where we're trying to make Brock Purdy the, the, the next coming of Tom Brady <laughs> and an MVP candidate, okay? The problem that the NFL has right now is that the two best teams are kind of boring or they're not dominant. So the Kansas City Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, but the conversation around the Chiefs is around Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and whether or not Taylor Swift is going to bring her cats with her when she moves in with Travis Kelsey in between tour dates. Oh, okay. I think she has three cats. It's a crazy cat lady. I did not know that. I, that's what I love about Taylor Swift. She's my yeah. people. Yeah. Love a crazy cat lady. Now, the problem with the Chiefs is they have not looked their their dominant selves. They've won games. I mean, and on defense, they've been dominant. <laughs> on defense, they've been dominant. Offensively, they haven't. Right. And then you've got the Philadelphia Eagles, too. The Eagles, with an MVP, a true MVP candidate in Jalen Hurts, has not necessarily looked the part. They have these close games. There's some fourth quarter magic. Obviously, the wheels have fallen off in Buffalo, which, again, you know how people go for the bills. There's flaming card tables and people are jumping through and there's things happening in the parking lot that I can't even put on this YouTube page because it would get us flagged. There's all sorts of things that are going on that have led to an NFL product that has been eh, shoulder shruggy, which then gets us to Aaron Rodgers and the cult of personality around Aaron Rodgers and how we obsessively talk about the Jets, too, because, unfortunately, a lot of Sports tastemakers, not just NFL tastemakers, but people who talk for a living, write for a living. they are all these weird, depressed Jets fans, man. Yeah. And to borrow a phrase from Bomani again, I'm surprised that a lot of these folks are not off that narcotic when it comes to the Jets. <laughs> okay. Go take a psychoactive tea and go find yourself a true you know, NFL team to root for. So you already have an obsessive conversation around New York teams. Oh, I'm even forgetting Tommy DeVito. Right? Speaking of New York teams. Tommy DeVito's won two games and people were like, hey, my guy, right? So now Aaron's been hinting, hinting, hinting. He's coming back. And every time he hints, he comes back or if he shows up on the football field and he throws a ball, people are like, my God, look at this. He's defined science. He hasn't done shit. He has not done shit. 
until he's actually back on the football field in a game, he hasn't done shit. I can't stress this enough. And the Jets keep teasing this, but they're finally giving the game away because it's shit or get off the pot time for Aaron Rodgers and whether he's truly going to come back. My boy, who's so predictable, who spent all the season talking to Pat McAfee about, I'm close soon, a couple fortnights. Oh, my goodness. I feel a little tingly. I forgot about the Fortnite line. You know, what's your favorite line? Like, he says something on Pat McAfee. Oh, my God. I think it moved. <laughs> That's how excited people get about Aaron Rodgers. But you notice, you notice what he's done the last two weeks? Especially this week. Now it's gone from, I'm back, I'm back, a couple Fortnites to, well, you see, it kind of depends. You know, if the Jets are still mathematically in it, then maybe I'm going to come back. You know, whatever. Here's my prediction. He's going to come back to the football field. He's going to be in this 21-day window. And the doctors are going to tell him, no. You're not cleared. You're not cleared. And then Aaron Rodgers gets to go to Pat McAfee. He said, I want to be out there, man. I really want to be out there. But, you know, apparently it's just not my call. And the doctors have said that I just don't, I can't be out there. I'm sorry. And he gets to go off as a hero and like the what could have been. And, man, if they had just had him. But that actually gets to the truth of the matter. The Jets were never good enough to compete, even with Aaron Rodgers healthy. Number one. Number two, if you are the Jets and you truly are about maximizing the entire point of bringing Aaron Rodgers here, what makes more sense, Joe? Shelve him this year, make sure he's fully recovered oh. this offseason, and then make the necessary moves because you truly got an assessment of what you need to work on. Oh, but wait, you can't. Because you sold the farm to get Aaron Rodgers, and you're not exactly flexible to get better in certain paces. No, their, their deal for him wasn't prohibitive. But again, there's some bills coming due for the Jets, and they might have to get creative with the salary cap, which we all know is not real. They could do that. They could and, handle that. And if there's anybody who knows about conspiracies and things that are not real, it is Aaron Rodgers. So I'm sure he'll tell them, hey, man, it's like birds. There's nothing to worry about here. So I see all through it. I've been seeing through it when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. I will continue to see through it when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. He's not coming back. He will not play in a game this season. And he'll have the excuse of the doctors telling him, nah, man, you're not, you're not ready to go. So there you go. I'm, I'm right about the NFL this year, though, man. All this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. The, the kind of the reason why we're here is we have to be honest about what we've had in the NFL this year. It's just been kind of shoulder shruggy. No, it's been worse than that. It's, you think it's been worse than that? Yeah, it's bad. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Every time we talk about the Panthers, every time we talk about the NFL, it's brought to you by Graffiti. Check them out in downtown Raleigh. We should do some axe throwing soon. I'm in. Let me know. Get me over there. All right. We'll make it happen. Tuesday nights is break even night. Sundays, they got all the games on. And of course, they've got great bourbon specials, great beer specials too. So again, go check out Graffiti. Big thanks to Hometown Realty for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Check them out online at myhtr.com. Buy, sell, existing homes. We, we know how that works. However, Joe, new construction, that's a big selling point for how Hometown Realty gets down. Yeah, more than 60% of their business is in new construction. They have six locations from here to the coast, more than 250 agents. They also have an unbelievably easy-to-use website. It's myhtr.com. You'll see the toggle right in the middle. Buy, sell, even a handy-dandy little mortgage calculator. You have a house. You have a car. You need insurance. You need to talk to somebody, like an actual human that's going to pick up the phone. Matt Davis, State Farm. Give him a call directly at 919-779-8277. InsureGarner.com or theoginsurance.com. It is very, very helpful to talk to actual humans. That's always been my experience with State Farm. You get that same experience with Matt Davis. Yeah, what do you have to lose? Like, uh, You get to save a bunch of money. And all you have to do is have a conversation. So give me a shout or go to the OGinsurance.com. And you notice we're having a theme here. You have a house. You need a house. Okay, you got to insure the house. Maybe you are hosting a party in said house. You know how to make it easy on yourself? Go to Butcher's Market. They have a bunch of prepared meals, great appetizers. Uh, if you want to go all in and cook, well, they got the meats, obviously. But more importantly, they got the seasoning. They got the sauces, the marinades, all the things that you need all at the Butcher's Market. But I can't stress this enough. Do not sleep on their prepared meals. It makes it super, super easy. At the home base, they're on falls. They've got a fridge with the stuff that you just got to stick in the oven. It's fantastic. I had that chicken marsala last time. It was fantastic. Yeah, I got bad news from my friends at the, at the home base at the falls. My new home base will be the one on Lake Boone.
that Brownlow lady in the house, Lauren Brownlow, joining us here in studio. What up? What's going on? Did you wear the right tights today? I don't. I don't wear tights. I it, not, unless I absolutely have to for like several reasons. Uh, one of which is that I always get runs in them super easily uh, and destroy okay. them. Okay, I so see. I there's see. that. It, the audience is probably wondering what the hell is Ovi is talking about. Why is he asking Brownlow about the right tights? Well, Julio and I spent a good chunk of time starting the show talking about Carolina and Duke in the ACC challenge. Carolina looked good. Duke's got some questions they need to answer, especially on the defensive side. But the biggest win did not happen. The biggest win for the ACC did not happen in the ACC SEC challenge. The biggest one actually happened uh, yes. with Louisville yes. beating Bellarmine. Facts. If you think I'm being facetious, I, I, know you're not. I am not being facetious. No, it facts. is important. Actually, Joe, this ties into a conversation we had at the beginning of the week with Luke DeCock. If the ACC is going to get out of this stupid conversation about how many teams are going to be in the NCAA tournament, are they good? Are they bad? You cannot afford to have shit losses on your resume, which Louisville had a bunch of last year. But. Kenny Payne continues to, I, I'm not quite sure what Kenny Payne is trying to get at here. So Tyler Johnson, one of their better players, uh, apparently just just decided to drop this nugget after the game. Hey, man, you ready for this? I probably shouldn't tell you this. We didn't have the tights that he... Okay, first off. Yeah, you should have stopped there, bro. I <laughs> probably shouldn't tell you this. You know something it's bad's about a, to follow. It's probably a good start. <laughs> Probably a good sign. Your, your your own little governor is kicking in there. Literally, when I first saw the quote, Ooh. I was like, why did he say this? And someone tweeted me and was like, that's actually what he prefaced it with. And I'm like, wild. Okay. So he didn't know if he wanted to play. Oh, yeah. What? You heard it. What? We didn't have the tights that he wanted that we've never had for him. And he decided, I don't feel like I can go. That's what young people do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even know. But he figured it out in the second half. He accepted the fact that we didn't have the tights that we've never had for him. And he played, and he played well. <laughs> Bro. What? what is that? Are you for real right now? So, you, as a college basketball coach, pretty bold strategy to go with a kids these days hot take. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Especially, like, your top recruit. Right. <laughs> right. And isn't he dealing with some sort well, of... Well, I, I had seen that on Twitter, yeah. And I've, I've heard that from people that know better, that he's dealing with like kind of a groin issue, too. Yeah, which maybe. is why he cared so much about the tights. <laughs> it wasn't an aesthetic issue. I, it doesn't no, sound... It but not. he sure made it sound like that, didn't he? Kids Threw him days, right man. under the bus and Kids let him run over him After and winning. back it up. This it, is one of those... Cl what I find fast... I don't like that kind of stuff, man. We don't, spend a lot of we don't spend a lot of time talking about Louisville. It's fine. But Louisville is a prime example of everybody was happy to get rid of a coach. And I'm yeah. not saying that Chris Mack oh, needed to stick around. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But we've seen this every so often across college sports. But I can give you two examples in the ACC. One for basketball, one for football. Al Skinner. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's been too long now. Oh, I can't man. bring that up no, anymore. No, no. I think I think kids today are going, who the hell's Al Skinner? Well, educate yourselves, kids. You should, because that was a really <laughs> Learn fun some flex, flex baby. Offense. That That's was, right. That was a really fun Boston College squad back in the day. No. So Chris Mack needed to go. Get it. It was a bad fit. Totally understand that. Yeah. But when he left, everybody was like, Psh, all good. We're getting Kenny Payne, baby. Kenny Payne's going to take this thing around. And Kenny Payne's been nothing but a cringe since well, and he's that's, arrived. The cringe part is, I think, like the optimal part, right? Because, like, yes, the losses themselves have been bad enough, but he always will at least say one thing that makes you go every huh? couple weeks or so that that Louisville fans are like, "Are you serious?" And then, <laughs> by the way, I'm sitting here remembering Chris Mack because when Louisville had to move on from Rick Pitino, Louisville was like, "It's all good because Chris Mack's coming home." I mean, Chris Mack, there is a lot more evidence, I think. To I agree, but of course that didn't work <laughs> well, out. Of course not. Yeah. Not everybody can be Bobby Petrino coming back to Arkansas. I don't even want to just... My favorite part about that report was that they were in the vetting process. <laughs> vetting the vetting, bro. <laughs> did, you no. go, did you go down to the volleyball coach's office? Was that, I mean, was that all on. you had to do? Like, Check the DMV oh, registration to still see if he has a motorcycle license. We, we vetted it. We saw that Sugar Bowl hat on his neck brace picture. Yeah, we remember. We we want to get back to that. That's what Arkansas is all about. Anyway, things just kind of haven't really necessarily worked out for Louisville. We'll see how it goes. Um, Glad they won. That's good for the ACC. 
Shit, be but, happy we won. But but like it's funny too because it's like then even people that love that love the kids these days takes were like, okay, why'd you play him then? Yeah. Like so you're making yourself look bad either way. So that's just that's hard to do. Congratulations. Speaking <laughs> of kids these days, the transfer portal is active, which means we have a new transfer portal sound when we see transfer portal news come across our desk. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Riley Leonard is entering the transfer portal, and he had one of the all-time great tweets to go along with his transfer announcement. Uh, this was from our friend Jordan Kramer, uh, who po- I think he pulled. I think she pulled this from Instagram, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. I saw that. That was and great. Says, I chose Duke because I wanted a school where I could be around those who are the best at what they do. I knew that meant that uh, I wouldn't be the smartest guy in the room. That every day I needed to push myself and compete. To be the best that I could. And that's what I did. As a result, I've made you the did. difficult decision to leave knowing I'm a, I'm better prepared for the challenges ahead and the, you know, the life ahead. But then he followed that up with, I recently found out that a few years ago, my favorite fishing spot at Duke was nothing more than an overgrown drainage ditch. Duke turned that part of campus into something better, something that will continue to grow and give back. It hits. I'd like to believe it's the same for me. I hope I leave this special place better than I found it. That with, a, with a picture of him with a fishing rod in front of this drainage ditch. That dude's either going to be a politician or a coach. Not sure which, but one of them for <laughs> sure. Right? Like, what to pull that out? Like, come on. Remember when we had Maybe such high hopes for Shane Battier? <laughs> We're like, man, that guy's going to be president. Well, it didn't work out. Sometimes um, you don't want to be president. Listen, Riley Leonard is going to go play football for Texas A&M. And that's the, you know what? If I'm Mike Elko. You sure? Are you sure? By I'll, way, I'll did, bet on it. Did you see Mike Elko? Well, it can't when, go worse than Jimbo's quarterbacks that yeah, he's had yeah. in there. The last no, I'm saying like, if, <laughs> yeah. I'm, if I'm Mike Elko, we talked about this when, yeah. when Matt Rule, like when he went to the NFL, like he didn't bring anybody with him, like who he trusted, like on his coaching staff. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Brady had like never met before, right? So if I'm Mike Elko and I'm going to Texas A&M where I'm being tasked with the impossible. You want to bring in somebody I'm bringing you trust. somebody I trust. And I know Riley Leonard's a playmaker. I mean, he, sure, he could end up at whatever. Notre Dame. What is it? Notre Dame, Auburn. Auburn. Sure, I, I could. I, I don't know Riley Leonard from, from Adam. But I, I if I, Mike Elko's already proved me wrong a million times. But yeah. I, if I'm Mike Elko, I'm bringing Riley Leonard with me. I don't know, man. I saw Mike Elko at the press conference where he had to do the Texas A&M version of the swag surf, and the look on his face was, have I made a horrible mistake? Well, you know. Hope the money's good, Mike. I really do. Well, it is good. <laughs> Speaking of Texas A&M, Max Johnson. Yeah. He's leaving Texas A&M, and he's going to North Carolina through the transfer portal. Oh, I didn't know he was going to North Carolina. He's going to UNC based on what I saw in the uh, AP report. Is that a good thing? I, I didn't know that it would be. I really going into his fifth year this year. Had nine touchdowns, five interceptions, didn't play in the last three games. <laughs> had a good game against Ole Miss, but they lost in the mm-hmm. last game that he played. 31 to 42, 305 yards. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. If Max Johnson transfers to North Carolina to be the quarterback Whoa. and six six, yeah, he's a big dude. A fourth, oh. a fourth year sophomore, big is Johnson. Is he too tall? A fourth year sophomore. <laughs> well, who's the who's the guy from McCall? What? The guy from Coastal Carolina? He also. He's still in school. He entered the transfer portal. <laughs> he's what? Wait, he has yes. more years. He has more years. I don't understand. And I, time is not real. <laughs> time, time is not real anymore. How is he still in school and has more years? Yeah, Let's I've see. lost. One, I have honestly two. lost track. Grayson McCall, oh, three times Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year. He One, entered two, the portal. Three, four, five. We're gonna, are we going to eventually a get a guy that's like seven time Player of the Year in this? Like the the only part that bothers me about this is not that guys are sticking around for longer because that's cool. Like they have mm-hmm. there's reasons for that, and we understand that. But it's more like the records become less meaningful because these guys got like more time than everyone else did to accomplish them. Right, right. <laughs> oh, and then one other bit of transfer portal <laughs> news. Although he has not transferred yet, I'm just waiting for it to happen. Is MJ Morris at NC State? Um, well, yeah. Our guy JC, and, and the reason why I say this, this is just more informed speculation. But our guy JC Zemble over at Wolfpack Central. Uh, I want to I want to put him on the MJ Morris deleted tweets beat because he's really good at that. <laughs> oh uh, man! So he has. I have to go scroll now. Nothing uh, gets past him. So no, no, not no, 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 no. Nothing gets past JC man. <laughs> no. Nothing gets past him. 
But he, the first one was back on November 14th. God's, this is from MJ Morris, a deleted tweet. God's word, God's word will never fail. Hashtag the truth don't need no help. And there's something like some images that say manipulative liars may feel invincible, but karma is an unyielding force that will bring them down. And then talks, there's a Deuteronomy quote. Man, Whoa. I haven't seen, Whoa. Man, I'm going back to St. Joan of Arc, sixth grade, reading the Old Testament. Okay, I was say, now. A little, little Old Testament well, up old in here. Vengeance is, God. <laughs> yeah, the mad, the, God. The mad God. Yep. Vengeance is mine. I will repay in due time. Their foot will slip for their day of disaster is near and their doom is coming quickly. That is some, that's some hot, those are bars from Deuteronomy, man. I remember that Dang. from my, uh, from my Catholic school days. And then most recently, again, another deleted tweet that JC sent my way. He was retweeting Joel Olstein, the motivational sky. Okay. And this is a Joel Olstein tweet from 1113 that he retweeted with God, you are faithful, faithful through the storm. I thank you for the adversity, the slander, and the lies. Prayer emojis. Hashtag unbreakable. And Joel Olstein's tweet was saying, it may not be good now, but if you'll keep the faith, all things are going to work together for your good. God knows how to bring good out of a bad situation. So these are... So Liberty, BYU... I don't know. <laughs> somewhere super religious. Dabo. I, Auburn. This, I don't bring this up. I want to be. I want to be abundantly clear about this with <laughs> with MJ Morris. I'm not bringing these tweets up to make fun of them. I'm bringing these tweets up to illustrate that the way NC State has gone about the MJ Morris news has essentially let the MJ Morris family be the ones controlling the message, and that's actually yeah. been a win for North Carolina. He, Dave Doran did the anti Kenny pain Kennedy. here. Yes. He didn't like, go kids yeah. these days. No, he didn't he, blame the family. He's like, like, just let I'm them not going to say he could have, but it was obviously like a little more on a T in that scenario for Dave had he wanted to, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He had very good restraint. He understood the assignment for him too. Mm -hmm. Totally on board with that. Yeah. So I don't see MJ Morris based on this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think he's coming back. I mean, we didn't. He who ever wasn't thought that coming back after he decided to bench himself? Yeah, are yeah, you surprised pretty, it's pretty taken? Much. Are you surprised that we haven't seen some sort of portal entering or announcement or something? <laughs> I mean, people. Everyone's got to run their own race, Joe. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Some so. people. Some people know the secrets to Super Mario Brothers, and they know how to get to the warp pipes to get to the end, like you do. Others, exactly. they just want to go the long way, and, and that it, might be where we're at. Got to run your own race. Uh, Why wouldn't good you for him, get man? The like I, he's got uh, three years of eligibility left, yeah. which is what he yeah. wanted to do. Yeah. Again, we you know we can't sit here and be like it's okay for Mike Oko to leave, but it's not okay for a player to leave. But all the all the choices you make have yeah. consequences. This for is, sure, this is one of those consequences. You want to do some premature evaluations? Sure. All right. All right, Brian, let's get started with the most important question out of this conference championship weekend. If okay. Florida State wins, they beat Louisville in the ACC championship game on Saturday night, yeah. are they automatically in the college football playoff? I really feel that they are. I really do. I, I understand. I, I, who, what? Julio disagrees. And I get it. I do. I understand why. However, I just don't. Like, here's the thing. If it'd be one thing if after losing him, they beat like, let's say, I mean, not this year's pit, but like, <laughs> let's say, I don't know, let's Georgia Tech. Right. And that they beat like an FCS team. You know what I'm saying? And they looked and they looked good or they won or whatever. Then I would be saying, you know what? OK, that's fair. But for them to go on the road to beat an SEC team that other SEC teams will get credit for beating, by the way, at, whether it was home or away and. Then if they beat Louisville now to beat a top, I think they're 14 in the last CFP. Mm -hmm. it's, I will say this. If they do it convincingly, it will help. <laughs> right? Like, I think you would agree with that, too. Like, if they beat them convincingly, I don't see how they have a case to leave them out at that point. Like, I just don't. You can't, you know, like, yes, I get why you would look at them and say they're not the same team. I don't think anyone would disagree with that fundamentally. 
But at the same time, like, I don't know what else you can ask them to do, but to more than like take care of the teams in front of them and that are good teams. Sure. Do you know what I know? But it's hard. And I get it. Like, it's not the easy, it's not an easy question to answer. I think it's the hardest question if they win that the committee will have faced this, like, thus far, honestly. Yeah. I, my question isn't about Florida State, it's about what happens with Alabama. Mm-hmm. I think if Alabama wins the football game, Florida State's in real trouble. I, I, they're not going to jump all, if all four of the conference champions end up unbeaten. Those four teams are in. Wipe your hands. Move it along. Here comes the 12-team playoff era. But I think this being yeah. the last year of the four-team playoff, they don't have to answer any questions after this, basically. Right? Right. So if you said, hey, we're jumping an unbeaten team in the last year, well, that's the breaks because they have an injured quarterback. I think part of it is set up for them to be jumped if Alabama wins. It could be. I think that. And look, I was one of those people last year that was like, sure that that was going to, you know what I mean? Like, so there's been other seasons, was it last year or two years ago, that everybody was like, that's definitely going to happen with Bama, and it didn't happen, Mm -hmm. that they didn't end up going into the playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I, you know, I was one of those people, though, that was like, surely they're going to put them in, and they didn't. So I was kind of like, okay. Well, no, no, if they win, if Alabama wins, they're the SEC champions. Well, no, that's true. The question now becomes, what do you do with Georgia, who has them, who they are number one right now? And has demonstrated to be a better football team than Florida State this year. For and, sure. And is not That's, missing their starting quarterback. Right. Again, this is now a human decision. When you put humans in charge of something, they're going to make human choices. So you're, Florida State is not the same team without Jordan Travis. They just aren't. Okay, they're so not. That, that you're gets right us, about that. That gets but. us to Friday night. Right. And what happens between Oregon and Washington. If Washington beats Oregon and completes the season undefeated. No problem. They're in. They're I, in. I, but this, I think one of them is in. But this is I where do. we but here's where we get into the Florida State conundrum. All right. So mm-hmm. if Alabama beats Georgia, Michigan wins, Washington wins, what do you do with Florida State? Right? Because one of them has to come out for Alabama, right? Or are they really going to keep Alabama out after beating Georgia? No, Florida State comes out. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Florida State needs Georgia to take care of business. They don't, but the, the I Pac-12 also think, conundrum. But I also think that if Oregon beats Washington, they're not going to get in. I, not without help. Not without help. You don't think so? So okay. So here's oh, here's no, a, no, no. here's a scenario. No, no, no. They would if be Oregon Alabama, wins, I think Oregon. What happens in. if Alabama and Oregon win? I think Oregon gets an like to me. If you avenge your only loss of the year, <laughs> this is what I was getting. At. Yeah, like, yeah, no. And you win a conference title, and you avenge your only You're, loss of the year, like. I don't know. What you just said, though, and the reason why this becomes really complicated, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Why Alabama is the fly in the ointment. Mm-hmm. They lost to Texas. No one's talking about Texas. Right. So you're going to stand up, up there and be like, hey, Alabama's in. That's the problem, And too. everyone's going to say, yeah, Alabama's in there. they SEC champions. Yeah. And then you're going to go, wait a second. We... And they've had te- they've kept they've kept Texas yeah. ahead of and that's the other part that gives me some pause right is because they've had Texas ahead of them this whole time they haven't moved it so Alabama's win might might not just mean Alabama gets in it might mean Alabama and Texas get uh, in I think it's and the Georgia opposite, gets out can we just jump to the twelve team playoff taking, now I don't well if, if Georgia Alabama loses, wins yeah which mm-hmm. means they beat Georgia yeah then you're gonna sit here and go are you gonna really gonna put Alabama ahead of Texas of course you are but. There right. still should theoretically be. That's why I'm saying if you're Florida State, you don't want any of no, these you scenarios. Definitely, no, we agree on that. Like, <laughs> you don't. The, the Pac-12 doesn't necessarily matter. I think if Oregon beats Washington, they would get in. I yeah. do, too. I, agree. Yeah. I, think, I think the winner would, gets in. I would think game. they would get in yeah. over Texas, to be perfectly honest yeah, with you, based too. on the strength of the Pac-12. Okay. Yes. And most importantly, we'll, we'll close on this. Do it. I love that I've dragged you into you have. doomsday scenarios. I love this. You have you have dragged me. <laughs> it's this. what college football loves anyway. I love like this. they thrive I have, on this. I have I have I have fought this for a very very long time. Twenty something years. Yes, I've fought this for <laughs> a very long time because I'm always like, don't I mean, be stupid. To, it's gonna work out. It'll be fine. It always that's my works attitude. itself out. No, but, but that's, except but, for this year, it hasn't yet. But it's that's all, the thing. Right, right. And you two have and known could, me. You two, know, you two have known me long enough that it's also it's words that I live by. It'll be fine. Things will work out. Yeah. They'll always work out. But what if Iowa beats <laughs> uh, That would be really funny. <laughs> but the, I don't see how. Why not? Iowa, well, first off, Harbaugh's back, so you never know. Right, so they're going to take a dip from that, obviously. They, they, I mean, clearly they take a dip from his coaching <laughs> the, on game days. <laughs> so there's yeah. that. Yeah. And then number two, Iowa has an ability to drag you down to their level. 
But wouldn't have they done that last against a good team? No. Well, here's where the difference is between I think Michigan can win that way. I think that's the yeah. part about that's Michigan. That's the other thing. Yeah. yeah. That's Michigan the thing can it, win ugly. They, yes. I, I watched a game where they ran it like 23 the times State in a game. row. The Penn yeah, State yeah, yeah. game where they basically didn't throw it in the second half. Yeah. So, yes, that's why I don't think this is going to happen. Yeah, because State Michigan, fans, do you think Dave Doran's conservative with dude, the lead? You I, didn't see that game. Dude, I've watched, <laughs> I've watched Iowa the last three weeks. I've bet on Iowa the what? last three weeks. Wait, it's, bet it's on them for what? To like, win. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's been wild. It's been a wild ride to actually watch them. Their quarterback is we, awful. You know, friend of their a friend of uh, awful. friend of this pod, Owen Good, has been betting uh, them then to hit the over for a certain <laughs> number of weeks in a row, and I'm very concerned Jeez. about their, him. Their offense is so. It's horrendous. Bad. It is, and I, so Josh Goodson has convinced me not to compare Dave Doran to Iowa because, no, like Kevin Concepcion, like the they actually thing. have players yeah. who they're interested. Who, by in, the like, way, shout out to coming KC. back. They show He's interest in scoring, right? <laughs> Which Iowa, does not. Iowa hates it there. Iowa hates it in the end zone. Kirk mm. Ferentz hates that stuff, man. No, no points. It's right. wild though. However many years we've had at the playoff, I mean, we all agree. There's almost every year there's a monster, and they're yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. team has to be beaten. Not only is there no monster this right. year, but if the scenario unfolds, uh, I disagree. But if the scenario unfolds the way that it could with all four unbeaten teams, I legitimately think Oregon and Texas are the two best teams in college football. They won't even be in the playoff. Here's here's where I disagree mm. on that. I think it's tough to win three in a. It's tough to win two sure. in a row. Yeah. It's tough to win three, and we talk about motivation through the regular season. Like, let's fast forward no, to why I, we're here. There's I, an element I, of that I've been wondering an, about I, with Georgia. There's an element yeah. of Georgia that will find out this weekend about whether or not they're going to put their shoes on Although, Alabama's like, couch. My thing I think was, it's entirely possible that's the case because Kirby Smart is not is clearly unafraid of Alabama. Sure, yeah. and they're when you watch. I mean, top to bottom, they're way more talented than Alabama. No, for sure. So, but here's where you're here's where you're wrong though. Okay. Okay. There are like last year with Georgia, they played one game that was close. Uh twenty no, I twenty thirteen but twenty thirteen Florida State. They absolutely beat the the life out of every I, team that yeah, they played. I know, I get, what I know this what team saying. is not a monster because they've played close games with but, South Carolina, who is not good, Auburn, who is not good. And Missouri, who's not good. And gosh, I love Georgia Tech. They're the spunkiest of all spunky. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think but they, they might they, have punched Joe, it on Georgia Tech Joe, a little bit this point. week, though. Like, right, they're, 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 they're going two weeks to prep for yeah, You can you, turn it on. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you can I don't turn it on. So. I don't think so. I will see. We'll see. It's anyway, harder my in last football, point. for sure. Does Jim Phillips show up to the American Athletic Championship game between Tulane and SMU? I hope so. I put money on SMU this week. <laughs> Julio, you said we suck at football. We just walked it off on the American Athletic Conference. That's why I, I want to see if, if Phillips shows up protect to give him the, the trophy. Got to protect the fortress as SMU is coming to town. Anyway, Brown, we'll get out of here. We'll talk to you later. All right. See what I got on? Well, that's sweet. It's a home field shirt. Don't you mean someone else did something in 1983? Other? Wow. Just ask my dad. He'll tell you all about it. So head on over to homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code OG23 to get 15% off your order. They got great deals going all the time. And they got cool vintage shirts like this 1983 Miami championship with the, the little hurricane uh, weeble wobble guys that I used to have on a hat. My dad got nostalgic. He, my dad bought this shirt for me because it had these little dudes on it. Yeah, I forgot what their names were, but I used to have them on my hat. My dad, I'm sure my dad will send me the photo of me rocking a Miami hat in the old Orange Bowl. And he doesn't listen to the podcast clearly because he has not said anything about hey, the Miami satin jacket. <laughs> hey, how come that Miami <laughs> satin jacket hasn't shown up yet? You said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go check them out. Homefieldapparel.com. Also check out Breeze Through locations across the triangle, locations across the state. And while you are running around doing some shopping, uh, you need a snack. Obviously, gas is important. Breeze Through's got you. You need that caffeinated fuel. Well, buy that lifetime refill tumbler mm -hmm. and get yourself some dark roast. You know, we've been talking about Anthony putting a menu item for you. I feel like Breeze Through needs to come up with like an OG blend. Ooh, I like that. We need to talk to Adam. Let's talk to Adam about that. We need an OG <laughs> blend that you can put in that thing that keeps us fueled throughout the day. Yeah, man, wherever you go. So Breezer's got you covered. Got that marketing, baby. Got that marketing. But let's say you don't feel like driving. Yes, you're driving around because... You're running errands, you're buying gifts, you know, getting ready to entertain. You've hit the butcher's market already, all that kind of stuff. But let's say you're going out, you're going to a holiday party. Let's say you're going to friends. 
Well, that's where Sleek Fleet comes into play. Check them out online, sleek-fleet.com. As they like to say, ditch your average ride share. Get to that holiday party in style. Don't worry about a DD. They'll be the DD for you. Yeah, Sleek Fleet. Tyler does such a great job. I was just singing his praises yesterday to one of my friends. I was like, hey, listen, you you need to get somebody picked up from the airport. (laughs) You want to go deal with that? You don't. Uh, you need to drop somebody off at the stadium or the arena. You don't want to pay for parking or you yourself. Hey, I'm going to get a ride to the game. Mm-hmm. Get a ride back. It's cheaper than paying for the parking and everything else. So do yourself a favor. Give them a call. 919-335-8840 or go to sleek-fleet.com. All right. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group hotline is Dimitri Ravanos. Uh, Young Gun is the podcast. He is in the bubble bath. And I'm assuming you're in the bubble bath because you're very excited about the SEC tying up with the ACC in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We talked about it earlier. I mean, I'm sure you got, I'm sure you're very upset about Clemson beating Alabama again. Um, What are you talking about? Clemson played South Carolina last week. Texas, you don't have any thoughts on Texas A&M losing to Virginia? That, that was a big thing. Florida, Florida losing to Wake Forest last night. Big win for the D. That was a big, big win for Steve Forbes. I mean, look, Florida's not very good this year. I I didn't know about this. Florida's not very good this year, but Billy Napier is on it with recruiting next year. Obviously, uh, Jalen Rashada, the quarterback they have coming in, is going to be a a game changer for for the Gators. I I think they're going to bounce back. Wasn't that uh, the NIL king? For there for a bit? No, 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 no. That was, uh, oh man, what was that kid's name? That was the kid that ended up at Arizona State. Oh, that's right. That's right. I can't keep track with the NIL. Um, Demetri, hold up, hold up, hold up. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that in SEC country, they weren't riveted by what was happening on their television between ACC basketball squads and SEC basketball squads? Uh, was this what was on when we weren't seeing the college football playoff rankings? <laughs> was this like the, the college football playoff ranking pregame show you're talking about? Was this like the inverse where some Carolina fans woke up and said, oh, there's a transfer from Texas A&M coming? Yeah, that's cool. I'm too busy <laughs> talking about 100 points on Tennessee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, UNC fans get excited about your third string Texas A and M quarterback. That's going to be a hoot. Okay, the real reason why we brought you on is because yes. you talked to Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com for Young Gun, uh, which is available right now. Florio's that insider's insider, and I, I actually, I want to bounce off what one of our our listeners said, where Mike Florio's uh, playing of how everything played out at, at, with with the Carolina Panthers sounds like fantasy fiction from Mike uh, Florio. <laughs> Uh, I, so I went back and listened, obviously I listened to it all the way through yesterday as I was editing, but I went back and listened to it just as a listener today. And I am 99.9% positive that the reason he knows what was happening inside the, uh, inside the facility is I think his source is Frank Reich. I, I'm almost positive that his source on this is Frank Reich, the way he's talking about what went down. And I don't mean to make excuses for Frank Reich, but here are 10 different excuses for Frank Reich. Right. Right. Well, the other thing that Florio pointed out on his website yesterday that I missed on when we were roasting David Tepper's press conference, he got Frank's yeah. name wrong twice. He <laughs> called him Frank Reich twice. Yeah. And according to a Florio source and this source, Dimitri, I'm thinking is Frank Reich. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, that's what he does when he doesn't respect you. He intentionally screws up your name. It's it's very funny having this same thought about Reich because when our buddy Kyle Bailey reported that, oh, there was a meeting of team higher ups that asked Frank Reich to put RPO plays in. Reich yes. said no. Yes. I, I would like to point out to everybody that there is a certain community down in the southern part of North Carolina that refers to Kyle Bailey as, quote, Dave's favorite. So I wonder who his source could be on that. All right. Alabama, that's, I was going to say, there, is there a planet where Alabama beats Georgia and they are left out of the yeah, college football that, that That's what this is ultimately about. We need Bama boy Dimitri to Finally. rise out of the tub. I don't yeah. know if you want that. Rise out of the tub, Dimitri. Scream into the camera that Alabama de- deserves a spot in the college football playoff if they beat Georgia. Over I mean, what are what over Florida State? What resume does Florida State have? I know they're undefeated, but look at who got put in front of them. They beat LSU. They beat and look. I will give Florida State this. 
LSU was better when they played Florida State than they were when they played Alabama. We did not know LSU was garbage when they played Florida State. So I will give you, I will give you that. The reason, like, I, it, it doesn't matter to me what we're using. Eyeball test, Alabama would smoke Florida State. Resume, tell me the, the big win on Florida State's resume that Alabama doesn't also have. I don't care. If Alabama gets left out of the playoff, after beating Georgia, number one, like Alabama will have won the SEC. What more resume point do you need than that? But if Alabama gets left out because of Texas, I will be okay with that. I won't be like thrilled about it. You might have like Lauren will have to convince me to come in on Monday to record Young Gun. But <laughs> I, I can live with that. All I ask is for consistency, right? The college football playoff committee says they're looking at resume when they rank one team and they're looking at eyeball test when they rank the other. If you're looking at eyeball test, why is Ohio State ahead of friggin' anybody at this point? If you're looking at resume, why uh, why is Texas not ahead of all the other one-loss teams at this point? I just want consistency. But here's the thing, Joe, and this is very important. And, and Gilio, you may think I'm nuts for saying this. I don't know why people are making Georgia the favorite in this game. Like, I think, I I think, think Georgia – now, the reason why – we talked about this with Brownlow earlier. I think Georgia – motivation to win three championships is incredibly difficult. We see this sure. in sports all the time to keep that hunger, to keep the fire. I mean, it was a big talking point we've discussed with the Carolina Hurricanes on a hockey level. I know they're really talking about the, NH, the NHL down in Tuscaloosa. Of but course. The point, is, the point is that I can envision a scenario where Georgia finally gets to the SEC championship game and the college football playoff and puts the hammer down. Just absolutely puts the hammer down because they have to put the hammer down. Yeah, I can't do it. I mean, look, they've, they've got the talent to do it. What's their, like, honestly, what's their motivation to play Georgia Tech? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I mean, like, their, their motivation to play Florida is nothing at, at this point. Like, you date any of their rivals. I, I think what I am looking at is where Georgia is strongest on defense is what has been the most consistent for Alabama on offense as they've sort of had this rejuvenation. It's Jalen Milrow throwing deep down the field. I don't know that Georgia has that speed on the outside that can shut down Milrow like they've had the last two years. I, I think Alabama's going to win this game. Such a homer. Goodness. I, I actually think Alabama's going to win, too. Okay. But do you have some white wine in a cup while sitting on the, in, the, in the bubble bath, Joe? No, it's too early. You've been hitting those, uh, those <laughs> coffee beans. How about my espresso beans, beans though? Yeah, the coffee beans got you jacked up thinking Alabama. I think both of you are wrong. I think Georgia's actually going to smoke Alabama. I don't know, like if there's a if there's a crossover you know, with the good people. Doing, at, you know what you're doing with Jalen Milrow, by the way. You're doing a Jaylen, you're doing a Jalen Milrow what you accuse Triangle football fans of doing with their quarterbacks, right? What's that? Like, oh, you're just pumping him up. Like, okay, he's had some good. Oh, they, they beat Auburn at the end. It was dramatic. It was fun. But that are we really put him on the level with the other Alabama quarterbacks we've seen? No, absolutely not. But I think he has the same skill set as Jalen Hurts does. He's just it's his first year as a starter. He'll get there. All right. Anyway, if listen, if Nick Saban believes in him, how can he not be the greatest quarterback ever? They said the same thing about Bryce Young. He never said a crossword about Bryce Young. How's that working out? What? Why would? What, what are you even talking about? Exactly. I know he's your sweet prince, your sweet baby prince of a quarterback. That's true. I don't think he should get a say, by the way, in who the next coach should be. Has I guess been. you, I mean, that, that, that is a college basketball opinion on a uh, NFL matter. <laughs> you guys talked about it this week. Yeah, no, I agree. What I'm saying is like to not fake your franchise quarterback and whether people are happy about it or not, he is the franchise quarterback. To not think <laughs> you should at least hear what he has to say about the candidates, that's bananas. I thought you were saying that Nick Saban doesn't deserve to check. No, 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 like, no, wait, no. Now, what? if Nick wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not Nick rule that out. Yeah, that, let's not rule that out. Maybe, maybe David Tepper should call up Nick Saban and be like, "I right, who should?" And if it's Bill O'Brien, then, then David Tepper should hang up the phone. <laughs> No, I, I haven't. I haven't on authority from beat writers that Nick Saban was very happy that Bill Belichick belted him out from a third year with Bill O'Brien. <laughs> All right, to me, appreciate it, man. Go check out Young Gun. We'll talk to you later. Bye, boys. All right, let's get out of here on some Hey Joe questions. Thanks to Oakwood Pizza Box in downtown Raleigh. Check them out, OakwoodPizzaBox.com. What do you got? What do you got coming up on Picks and Pizza today? Well. 
Anthony has won nine of 11 prop bets this year. Oh boy. So he's nine and two. And he's also won five of his last six overall bets in mm -hmm. the last two weeks. So he's, he's pulling away in our season long standings. So I will, I will attempt to close the gap over to threads where Dan points out, you interact with a couple of Joe obvious thread posts. And this is what happens. State basketball, state Wolfpack football, NC state university as Dan, uh, is he's a, Oh yeah. I was gay. I was going to say, I know who Daniel price is uh, now that I'm putting two, two, two and two together. He's a Carolina guy. Oh, okay. Does that make me a, does that make me an NC state guy? I think NC State just kind of. I don't know what you do on Threads, so I don't. Yeah, I'm not familiar by the with way, the Threads. By the way, people have been wanting me to ask you to get on Threads. Okay, it's, you'll have to show me how to do it's it. It's Super easy to do. Just download Threads, tie it to your Instagram account, and start posting like oh, you would a I, tweet. I do have an Instagram account. Yeah, so it'd be easy enough for you to do that on Threads. Too. Okay, it's it's yet another app for you to download. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> something we all want to do. Let's go to the YouTube comments. Uh, from Dom, David Tepper is quickly approaching the James Dolan zone. Hell, he might Ooh. be there already. Mm. Constantly thinking he's the smartest person in the room. You know, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Dom because we've been looking for football one-for-ones, right? Oh, he's Dan Snyder. No, he's not Dan Snyder because Dan Snyder was super problematic. Uh, Jerry Richardson. I mean, there's a reason why David Tepper has the team in the first place because Jerry Richardson had to get out of the paint for Gene's Friday and you know sexual harassment issues. So, James Dolan, who will scan your face and track you at MSG, might be a better one for one, like a super petty guy that's going to like take it out on you, like he did Scott Fowler earlier this week at the uh, at the press conference. So that might be actually the 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 actual one Don't for one. It. Donate it. We'll have to we'll have to work on that one. Um, a lot of people reacting to my Florida State take about them being in. It's fine. I get it. Uh, you might not like it. This is from Jermaine. You might not like it, but FSU isn't as strong as they were without Jordan. Plus, they haven't beaten anyone. I mean, they beat LSU. Although, I do want to give Duke football coverage some credit. Why is Joe G downplaying FSU being Florida? I thought per Feinbaum, all the SEC teams were basically gods amongst mortals. Which, it's funny. It's a good point. <laughs> it's, it is a good point because Feinbaum this week you're right. Was well, going on well, and on like Louisville lost to Kentucky. How you're automatically disqual disqualified? It's like, but yeah, they beat Florida. Florida State beat Florida. Who's when? How how are we doing this? It's a great point. It's a very very good point. <laughs> he, got, he got me on that one. All right. Well, you know what? We'll close on that. I don't think Duke football coverage can ask for much more than that. Julia going. Yeah, you know, you got me. That's going to wrap for this week's of, this week's worth of shows. We will see who is in the college football playoff. We'll see you Monday.